Living with my dad was like being in a circus funhouse that lacked the fun. I would look at my reflection and see a stranger while listening to my dad spout out bigoted nonsense, which seeped into my mind, poisoning my self-esteem. At night, I would dream of a person who was happy and confident, but the image drifted out of view when I awoke. I hunted everywhere for answers to questions my mind asked my reflection, to my dad's dismay. He did his best to divert me from other points of view. He kicked up his homophobia and racism, yet I got a thread of who I was. When I came out as gay, my dad accepted me, or at least that's what he said. But at this point, I was unraveling more of the hidden truth. I understood that I was bi and pan, not gay. I dared not touch my gender. That beast was one my dad could not accept. For his transphobia trumped his homophobia and racism, even his classism. But I could not stop discovering who was in my reflection, and at some point I yearned to switch places with my feminine reflection, for she lived as a fact, not a lie or a mask, but just a simple fact of life. When I told my dad this, he sent me to my mom's house, having been seared by his own bigotry, yet he still accepted me, or that's what he said while kicking up his transphobia until I broke. After I left him to sweep up the porcelain feelings he broke when he refused my existence, I stayed at my mom's house, where I was left to cleanse my mind and was able to think clearly. My reflection was no longer frowning at the poisoned counterpart standing in front of them but was smiling at the entity who matched. The reflection was mine, and we both accepted ourselves, no longer needing a bigoted racist to validate the entity which is me. After my dad died, it was just my mom, my grandma, and me at our house in Mexico. My sisters all were already independent enough to live by their own. I spent time helping my grandma by picking up the mango leaves from the tree and playing tassos with people and sometimes playing Legos with my cousin. One day, my mom got a call from someone she knew from school. He told my mom that he can bring us to the USA. So my mom told me that we would go to California. When the taxi arrived, I told my mom, this is probably the last time we would be here. Then I got really sad. We got to the airport and I was scared because it was my first time on an airplane. We got to California and my mom's boyfriend greeted us in the airport. Before I knew him in person, my mom showed me some pictures of him. But when we met him in person, he looked different. I think he was using a filter or something. I told my mom, and she thought that was funny. Then he had an apartment ready for us, and we slept in an inflatable bed. The bed was deflated and was flat in the morning. The next day, I was sad because I missed Mexico. My mom told me that if I still didn't feel comfortable, then we could go back to Mexico. I told my mom, maybe not yet, because I felt that I would have a better life here. The days passed, I went to school. It was hard for me to understand English, but I was learning. Then we changed apartments and I went to a new school. In my new school, I met my best friend. He was in my engineering class. He was kind of lazy at the beginning, but I helped them out. My mom always tells me to be nice with people because you never know what they've been through. At the end of eighth grade, I learned a lot. I also created a prototype of my character. By ninth grade, I met my favorite teacher. She always supports me just like my mom and makes sure that I am on track with my education. That year, I also got my US residency with my mom's help. My 11th grade year was when I made a big jump for my video game project. My mom worked very hard so she can buy me a really powerful creator laptop. That year, I created 3D models for all of my characters, music for my game, 
drawings, and my best friend is helping me with coding. In the future, I want to keep learning and growing my creative projects. I also want to help my mom so she doesn't have to work as hard. She deserves to retire and rest. She has helped me so much and I want to return the favor. As a kid, I was pretty artsy. Whether it was drawing and painting or making mini movies with my toys, it felt rewarding. And I'd always liked fashion. Over the course of the pandemic, I took time to explore that interest and found a new passion. Later on, I became a drama kid, acting, directing, combining all of my interests. I felt like I was at the top of my game. When I became the costume designer for a big show at school, it felt only natural. After a recent hiatus, I desperately wanted to jump back in. I felt like I was more than ready to take up the task, or so I thought. I'm Olivia Marcieski, and this is the story of how I stared chaos in the eye and came out on top. I started out by trying to balance everything. Schoolwork, drama, sports, home life. But it quickly went downhill. Because of the pressure I experienced, I put off everything and instead threw myself into design, struggling to regain my standing in drama. Work, 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 work. That's what my life became, and it felt exhausting. Not only did I want to create something meaningful, but there were also certain levels of greatness set by the director himself, a level of greatness that I was determined to achieve. I went the extra mile and worked long, strenuous hours while dreaming up elaborate designs that the director liked, but I was unsatisfied by. Tensions were high. The Joma building began to feel more and more like a prison, but the harder I pushed, the more my body began to push back. Now, you remember that long hiatus I mentioned earlier? Well, a month or two prior to my design gig, I came down with COVID for the second time. And even though I was only out for two weeks, it felt like an eternity. And while it didn't take a toll on my health then, it certainly did so now, for the vengeance. My attendance really took a turn for the worse, and I missed more and more class and fell even further behind, struggling to catch up. It didn't take long before I was terribly overworked and burnt out. But the director kept on pushing, and I wasn't one to not deliver, so I kept on going even though I felt like I had nothing left to give. Coffee, Advil, stress. That's all I seemed to live on then while working in an environment that barely helped me achieve my goals. Spending all my time in a cramped, fluorescently lit room with tired eyes and sore fingers brought me just before my breaking point every single day. Finally, my body said enough is enough. I woke up on the cold cement floor of the drama building with a group of students surrounding me. I had fainted. It shouldn't come as a surprise, but to me, it was a wake-up call. Literally. I so desperately wanted to prove to everyone that I could still handle things like before that I forgot to think about myself, to put myself first. Over the course of two long months, even I had noticed how the simplest things had become a challenge. I couldn't do the things that I love without being met with shaky hands or fatigue. Not to mention, I was on the verge of failing. Every problem I had been ignoring or putting off for later had all come crashing down on me. So what was I to do? That's the thing about reaching rock bottom. The only place you can go from there is up. I threw away the yerba mates, laced up my converse, and started focusing on costume design again. But this time, coming from a new approach. This time, with myself in mind. The more I focused, the more inspired I became, not only in my role, but as a student as well. Newly motivated, I started turning in my late work and showing up to class more. I participated and studied well. By the end of the year, I was flourishing. And yes, I was tired, but satisfied because of all the hard work I put in paid off. And not only were my costumes a smashing success, but my grades gone up too. Without design, I probably would have saved myself a lot of stress, but I wouldn't have learned about myself in the way that I did. I found balance within, and by doing that, I got my group back. I love football, and I love my turtle flash. On my eighth birthday, it started to rain, so we went inside. My friends turned on the Super Bowl. Now, I've never really been interested in football. As I started to watch, I got more excited and more invested. I fell in love with the quarterback position. I knew that's what I wanted to do. 
I started to play football with friends. Now I could experience what it was like to play and not just watch. Football had become my passion. Then a new love came up. Around the seventh grade, I got a turtle. Flash. I love him and care for him so much. My love for animals inspires responsibility. I would not neglect him. Flash went missing for three nights. But we weren't worried because we knew he'd come back. And he did. My turtle was doing great. He was healthy, active, and content. Around the end of eighth grade, I was playing football at break, like usual. I ran to the touchdown. As I caught the ball, I was pushed. My body weight had snapped my arm in half. I fainted. I was rushed to the ER. The x-rays showed that I had broken my arm in two places and that it needed to be realigned. The shots hurt so much I started to scream. After the third try of shots in realignment, I was finally casted. The healing process had started. Football had paused because of this. After I had gotten out of the cast, I was babying my arm and was hesitant to get back into football. I thought, what a better way to get over the fear of further hurting my arm than to do the thing that caused it. So, I joined a football team. I was really trying to push through. It took some time to get over the trauma I had. I was really enjoying being on an actual team instead of playing with friends. Everything was going great. One day, I was at the gym with my friend, and I got a call from my mom. My turtle had passed away. I rushed home and saw him laying there with his head contracted into a shell. He had died. I was devastated. That night, I decided to use the sadness as motivation to keep going for Flash. Those types of turtles have 12 bumps, but Flash had 13. I made 13 my jersey number. My dream as a football player is to be an All-American and get drafted by a Division I school. The best of the best. Sometimes dreams don't come true. This one will. I will carry Flash's legacy when I make it to the NFL. Hi, my name is Robinson. When I was 10, I fell in love with cars. For example, NASCARs, sports cars, and hypercars were the things that fascinated me. I felt happy every time I'd see one. But around where I live, there aren't that many fancy cars. At the time, I didn't know anything of what cars were or how they worked. But along the way, I met people who did, and they taught me about cars or vehicles. I learned that some cars, mostly sports cars, like the Lambo, have instead of the engine being in the front, it would be in the back. I learned that this makes the car move faster if it's a rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. So learning specific things like this excites me. For me, cars are extraordinary. The first Lamborghini that I saw was the color orange. Lamborghini was also the first brand of car that I had seen that was a sports car. The design of the Lamborghini is always exciting to see. In the interior, the car could be fully customizable, which is nice. The Lamborghini cars look like sharks, in my opinion, because of their shape and their sharp edges. The designers for the sports car did a great job on designing it. Some, think, some people look at cars like simple objects, but cars mean a lot more than that to me. For me, they represent everything and more. My family is from Guatemala, and we aren't rich nor poor in between. When I am older, I hope I can become a NASCAR driver or mechanic for a Lamborghini. I want my car to be number five. If I became a driver, that means I could help myself, my family, and Guatemala as a country. 
I could help the merchants of Guatemala and maybe inspire people to be a NASCAR driver too. If this dream came true, I would feel happy and thankful. This motivates me to learn more at my age right now. For my future, I'd like to continue my passion for sports cars.